What is up guys? This is the second video in this installing Flutter mini series on Mac OS. So in the last video, as you recall, we went through my article here and installed Flutter on our machine. That was this part here. And we got all the way to running these commands here to make sure that Flutter was successfully installed. So I didn't talk about this command here, Flutter doctor. So let me copy that and run that. And this just gives you some information on Flutter. So it's similar to the Flutter version command, it just gives you more information. So we'll run through and do a bunch of checks with Flutter. So in my case, I have Flutter installed, that's good. I have the Android stuff installed and the Xcode. So all this will be good. And I also have it synced to VS Code. You will probably not have those set up yet. So instead of a check, you'll see this. And this is for connected devices because at the moment I don't have any. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can set up Xcode. So we'll get Xcode set up for Flutter development and we'll look at creating an iOS emulator so we can create a Flutter app and run it on iOS. So now we're at the platform setup section. So for iOS, everything runs through Xcode. Xcode is the iOS uh, development environment. And if you want to develop Flutter apps for iOS, you have to do it on a Mac with Xcode installed. There's no other way. So if you don't have Xcode already installed, you can install it from the Mac App Store. And then for the next step, we can configure the Xcode command line tools. So go ahead and copy this and just paste both of these into a terminal. All right, so once you have that done, we should be all set to set up the iOS simulator. So if you have Xcode installed, which I do and you should now, it's this app right here. All we can do is we can open up a terminal, clear this out. And we can type open-a simulator. And this will open an iOS device for us. Okay, and there we go. So as you see, we have a simulator that opened up for us when we typed that command. All right, so that opened the simulator for us. So the next step is to create and run a Flutter app. So again, we can go into the terminal and you're going to want to CD into a directory where you want to create an app. So I'm going to list everything out. I'm going to go into my dev folder, I'm going to CD into my YouTube folder, and I'm going to create my Flutter app right here. So to create a Flutter app, we simply type Flutter, create, and then following is the name of your app. So I'm just going to say my app like they have and hit enter. And this will create a Flutter app. As you see, it does it pretty quickly. And when it finishes, there we go. So it gives us two commands to run. So first, I want to list everything out. You'll see our app is right here, my app. So let's CD into that and list everything out again. So these are all the files that Flutter comes with. We're not going to take a look at them yet because this is simply how to install and get everything up and running. So that's the first command, the cd into the app. Next we can run the app with flutter run. And this will run it automatically to my simulator here because it is the only device connected. So this will take a second it has to build a couple of things. See, running Xcode build. As you can see, as it's doing stuff, it will output the information of what it's doing at that moment. So we can kind of follow along. All right, and there we go. So as you can see, it took 50 seconds for that, 70 seconds for that but it is now running on our iPhone 11 Pro Max. 
and it gives us all this information here. This is information that's not necessary for us now, that is development stuff, but regardless, here is the app running. So this is the Flutter Starter app, and it's just a simple app where you click a button and it tells you how many times the button has been clicked. So to start the app, we just do Control C, and that will stop it. So the next step with iOS is to display to an actual device. So if you want to develop and use an actual device for testing, you can do that. So what you're going to have to do is copy both of these commands and paste them in the terminal and run it. So I'm going to do that, paste it there, enter my password. All right, there we go, everything is completed. So to run your app in an actual uh, device, you're going to have to open up Xcode and modify a couple of things there. So first thing we're going to do is open our project in Xcode. So what we can do is I recommend going to Finder, going into the folder where Xcode is. So my app, here we go. And this iOS folder here is where all of the iOS project files are. So go ahead and select this file here and simply drag it on top of the Xcode. And that will open up this in Xcode. All right, and here are the project files on the left. So what you're going to want to do is go up and click this main runner file. And this brings up a bunch of settings for this project. So if we go back to the documentation, there's a couple of things that we have to do. So the first one is we need to add an account. So you're going to go to if you're in Xcode 10, go General Signing Team. For the newer one, we want to go to Signing and Capabilities Team. So you probably have that one. So we'll go to Signing and Capabilities. And right here, for Team, it says there are none. So if you tried to run this app to your device right now, it would fail. So we need to change this Team. So click on it. And right now, I have mine set up but you probably don't have anything yet. So you're gonna to want to go and add an account. And this will uh, take you through a setup process where you can add your information. All you need for this is an Apple ID. So you do not need a developer account. Uh, the only time you need an Apple developer account is if you want to actual, actually deploy your app to the App Store. But for development purposes, you do not need an account. So I'm going to click my name here. All right. And then you see down here, it's still failing. And that's because this bundle identifier is the default. So we need to change this. So this example right here, we need to change that to anything, a unique identifier. So I'm going to change this to uh, Benjamin Carlson. There we go. So now, as you see, that is working. So we changed the team and the bundle identifier. Let's go back to the documentation. Here we go. They're saying add an account and the bundle identifier. So that's that. And the last thing what you're going to want to do is up here, you can choose what device you want. So they're saying right now there's no connected devices. So go ahead and connect your device to your Mac. When you connect it, you'll see the device pop up here. Go ahead and select it. Once you do that, go up here and run your project. And when you run it, this should pop up. When it pops up, hit trust. And then you're also gonna have to go into settings and trust again. So 
it will be in either general device management or you might need to go to general profiles device management. So you will have to trust for every app you develop. So once you do that, go ahead and run it again and everything should work. All right, so that is all for the iOS setup. And in the next video, we're going to look at how you can set up the same thing, but for Android.